the hazel walking stick. A long time ago, when Wales was a farming community, farmers used to like to sell their cows and their geese at market in London. To get them to London, they would employ drovers who would walk the animals all the way from Wales to London. Gwyn was a drover, and every time he got to London, he liked to stay a few extra days just to look around the big city. He was so different from Wales. One day when he was on London Bridge, he heard a voice behind him. Burada! Good morning in Welsh. He looked around and he saw an old, old man with a long grey beard. Burada, said Gwyn, but he was a little confused. How do you know I'm Welsh? he said. The old man pointed to the walking stick that Gwyn was holding. That walking stick was cut from a Welsh hazel tree, said the old man. This was true. Gwyn had cut it down himself and had, and had made it into a walking stick himself. If you can show me where that tree is, then I can show you riches, said the old man. Now going from Wales to London and back, was quite dangerous and often people liked to travel with the drovers because they were big strong men but they had to pay them. Gwyn thought that this man was just trying to get a, a free journey back to Wales but he looked harmless and he was friendly enough so Gwyn said yes come back to Wales with me I'll show you the tree. He didn't really believe the story about Richard. The journey back to Wales went like that. The old man talked, told stories of the places he'd been and the things that he'd seen. And soon they were walking up to Gwyn's house. It was late, so Gwyn's wife gave them both a bowl of soup and they went to bed. Early the next morning, before the sun rose, they set off looking for the tree with some shovels in their hands. When they found the tree, the man said, so Gwyn dug. He dug and he dug for about an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. The sun was coming up and he was getting hot. And then, clunk, he hit a stone. Move it, said the man. So Gwyn pushed the stone to one side. And it was opening a door to a passage. They walked down the passage. The old man going first. They walked on and on into the mountainside. Until they reached a big bell. They kept walking on and on and on in the darkness until they reached a big indoor room, a cavern underground. There on the floor were a hundred men, all sleeping, all dressed in military uniform, army uniform, with a shield and a sword. In the middle was one man in a golden robe with a golden shield and a golden sword. Who are these men? said Gwyn. These are King Arthur and his men. They are here to save Wales at any time Wales needs them. Gwyn wasn't listening because his eyes had been caught by a big mound of gold coins in the middle of the room. Help yourself, said the old man. But don't take too much. Take as much as you need. Gwyn filled his pockets. He filled every single thing. Do you not want to take any? He said to the old man. I have wisdom. I don't need money said Gwyn and continued to fill all of his pockets. It was time to go back. They walked up the passage until they got to the bell. Shh, don't touch the bell, said the old man. But as Gwyn walked past, he was no longer as thin as he was before because he had all the gold on him and boing, 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 he touched the bell. One soldier woke up and said, does Wales need us? No, sleep on, said the old man. The soldier went back to sleep. When they got out of the cave, the old man said, I will go now. You have enough money to last you a lifetime. But if you need to come back, come back. But if you ring the bell, you must say, no, sleep on. Gwyn went back to his wife and she was amazed to see all the money. They built a new house. They bought new dresses. They had parties. They had festivals. And soon all the money was gone. Gwyn didn't mind because he knew how to refill his pockets. So he went back to the hazel tree. He dug the hole. He moved the stone. He went down the passage. He got past the bell. He went down the passage. He went into the 
the big room he filled, this time not his pockets, but a big sack full of gold, full of gold. Put it over his shoulder. He went back up the passage. He got to the bell. It rang out. Does Wales need us? Said one soldier. Two soldiers. Three soldiers woke up. Five soldiers woke up. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. Does Wales need us? Gwyn was trying to remember what to say. Go back to sleep. Sleep arms. Go, go. Go back to sleep, he said. The wrong words. The men came after him. Gwyn dropped the sack of gold and he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran. <laughs> they caught him. The next thing Gwyn knew was something on his cheek. He opened one eye and then the other. He was lying under the Welsh sunshine on a Welsh mountainside with a little rabbit licking his cheek. He looked around for his bag of gold, but it was gone. He looked around for the hazel tree, but it wasn't there. He got up and went back to his wife. Every day for the rest of his life, he looked around Welsh mountainside, looking for hazel trees, digging holes, hoping to find that stone to push to one side, but he never found it again. If you enjoyed that, please go to my website, garethestoryteller.com, to see more about my services.